by Rio Grande. Riverside Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars broadcast 287 regarding a blood-stained car at the Indio substation. Assist the officers. That's all. Rolls and quits. <laughs> our new gasoline. This new all-purpose Rio Grande Crux embodies twice as many vital ingredients as found in ordinary fuel. And all are expertly combined in just the right ratio to give you the gasoline of all purpose. Police car drivers and the pilots of other public serving automobiles throughout California were the proving ground for this sensationally new motor fuel. And their unstinted acclaim convinced us all-purpose Rio Grande cracks should be made available to the general motoring public. They found its scientific blend of additional ingredients made up a gasoline that has everything, each element contributing its part to the 100% performance of which each car is capable. Maximum motor car efficiency at minimum cost is yours. The emergency benefits of all-purpose Rio Grande cracks are no farther away than the nearest red and white Rio Grande station. So get a tank full in the morning and watch your car take you places more swiftly, more smoothly, yes, and more economically than ever before. The story we are to hear tonight has been taken in the main from facts to be found in the confidential files of the sheriff of Riverside County. We have therefore asked under Sheriff Steve Lynch to open our program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to avail myself of an opportunity to stress the importance of public recognition of the work of the peace officers. The job of police in any jurisdiction is one that rightfully belongs to the general public. The fact that this duty is delegated to certain officers does not lessen the public's responsibility to cooperate with those officers in enforcing the law. In Riverside County, we are proud of the cooperation, not only of private individuals, but of the various law enforcement bodies. The cooperation of local police departments with the Sheriff's Office and of all other branches of law enforcement makes it an easy task in our county to point out the truthfulness of the statement, crime in any form is a losing proposition. Additional facts on tonight's case will be heard at the end of the program. In the sheriff's substation in Indio, Deputy Sheriff Ben de Cravacour receives a visit. Hello, Patterson. Come in. Morning, Ben. How's the sheriff's office? Oh, getting along. What's on your mind this morning? Remember old man Martin? Old Wendy? Yeah, he's the one. Sure, I remember him. Haven't seen him for quite a while, though. Must be about a month. Well, that's right. I was out looking for him yesterday, but couldn't find him. What do you want with him? Well, he bought a car from me, that old Chevy of mine. He hasn't made the payment that was due on the 3rd. And this is the 24th of September. That's right. I want my money or I want the car back. What can I do about it? We can't run around looking for somebody just because he hasn't shown up lately. Well, maybe not, but I want my car back. It's out there on the Kirksteiner's ranch. I found that myself, and I want it. Want me to go out with you? Yep. Okay, we'll drive out and see what the car is doing there. There she is, all right. That car's been here a long time. How do you know? Yes, sir, I'd say this car's been here since the latter part of August. Well, I say, how do you know? Remember that dust storm we had around the end of August? I <laughs> sure blew all night. Uh-huh. Well, take a look at the running board and the wheels on the east side. Say, hey, that's the direction the wind came from, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, the dirt's piled high on that side, all right. The tires are almost covered, and the crevices along the running board are full. It looks clean on the other side, though. Yeah, and I'd say it's been clean. And it was cleaned after the storm. I believe you're right. See here, along the running board. 
There's been water or something liquid poured along here. Yeah, there's a clean place on the floor here, too. Yeah, that, that's been washed with soap. See the streaks along there? Let's see what's on the inside. Uh-huh. The inside of this car has been clean, too. At least the front part has. Well, here's a lot of bedding and some groceries back here. Any idea where the groceries came from? Well, here's a sales ticket from the Indio Grocery. It's dated uh, August 29th. Good. Let me have it. I'll check on it later. Say, so what are you taking up the floor mat for? I want to see what's under here. Find anything? Unless I'm mistaken, this is blood under here. Hey, it looks like the floor had been washed, too. No, nope. that water mark was made by the water running under the mat. Whoever cleaned up this car must have forgotten about that. Say, you know something? Maybe Wendy's done something and skipped out. Been thinking about that. He was kind of sweet on a girl down there at Coachella. You know, her old man told him he'd blow his head off if he didn't stay away from the girl. Ah, <laughs> Wendy was too old for that sort of thing. Well, that's what you think. Uh, you don't know Wendy like I do. Well, nobody from Coachella's been reported missing. And Wendy has. So maybe we're jumping at conclusions. You're doing the jumping. I'm just not overlooking any bet. Maybe Wendy has done away with somebody and has run off. On the other hand, that may not be blood. That's right, too. And still further, it may not be human blood if it is. Well, how are we going to find out? Here, I'll scrape a little of it off and take it into Dr. Gray in Indio and have him make tests on it. Well, can he tell if it's human blood? Sure, it's a scene. <laughs> Well, 
close answer. What do you think? Personally, I believe somebody killed old man Martin for his money. I never was sure he had any. Neither was I. I checked on that letter we found in Martin's shack. Oh, the one to Judge Fredericks and Banning? That's the one. What did the judge say? Uh, he'd written Wendy about a traffic case that Wendy was involved in. Uh, he'd been fined for drunk driving, but wasn't able to pay the fine, so the judge let him pay it in, in installments. Well, when Wendy didn't show up on the first of the month like he promised, the judge sent him a letter. It had a self-addressed envelope in it. That's the one we found. Oh, well, and evidently Wendy's talk about having money was a pipe dream, huh? That's what I figured, but some of these fellows around here might have believed his story. Oh, and killed him for the money, huh? That's the basis I'm going on. I think we'll find his body in some of these fallow fields around here. Yeah, might as well start looking here. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look in this old well. If there's a body in there, you can have the job of getting it out. I don't want any part of it. Nope. Nothing down there. Handy things, hand mirrors. You can throw the sunlight clear to the bottom. Yeah. Well, I guess we might as well try the next well.
quite oblivious to his surroundings. Ben, we want to know about the Martin case. What did you intend to do next? Talk to people on the ranch. Where we found car. They're going to move. Juanita told me. Who's Juanita, Ben? A good little amateur detective. Talk to Juanita. She'll help you. I remember seeing her address in his book down to the office. Okay, Ben, we'll talk to Juanita. What else? Look for boy. Martin used to go to dances with. May know he killed Martin. What's his name? Alberto Rodriguez. Look for Alfredo Ruiz, too. Here and around with Rodriguez. Think they killed Martin, Ben? May have. Ask Juanita. Anybody else you think we ought to talk to? Yeah, talk to Italian John. You may know something. Talk to a fellow named Calvio. He moved Martin's stuff to just on her ranch. Bet he's telling us more than if he was conscious. Well, that's possible. He's telling you the things he had planned to do and the things he's heard. You'll be safe from following up on them. Maybe that's a good tip. Might as well try it. I guess so. This is beginning to get uncanny talking to Ben. Let's get to work. Where it came from. Yeah? Where? Off 
the watch that our friend Rodriguez is carrying. Is that so, Rodriguez? Senor, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't, eh? Well, we'll take you along to jail and see if you can't think it out. Anywhere. Uh-huh. 
Joe hasn't seen the two birds for a month at least. He said the fight didn't amount to anything anyway. Neither of them has shown up for treatment anywhere. Well, it's not important anyway. I have a hunch the boys we want are in Arizona. Well, what are we waiting for? Now, according to the information I got about those two boys from the sheriff in Phoenix, they'd been seen around this pool hall. How are we going to know them? That's your problem. We'll have to take a chance on anybody that answers their description. Well, we can't pick them up out here. Good thing we have an agreement with Arizona about extradition. Yeah, it might hold us up otherwise. Hey, look. Yeah? There's a couple of monkeys who look pretty good to me. You mean that young one and the bird at the second table? Uh-huh. Alberto's only 18, you know, and his uncle's only 31. I think they're the babies we're looking for. Let's take a chance. Oh, uh, Alberto. Somebody called me? Yeah, I did. Come over here a minute. I'll bring Alfredo with you. Come on. What a break. Who are you? What do you want? Yeah, I want to talk with you a minute. You know this man, Alfredo? No. Well, don't be bashful, boys. We've been wanting to see you fellows for some time. You look a little homesick. Oh, no. We're not homesick. We like it here, don't we, Alfredo? Sure, we like it here. Oh, you'll like it better back in California. We never lived in California. That's your story. Well, here's our story. Well, well, how do you put these handcuffs on us? Who are you? We're officers from the Sheriff's Department of Riverside County out in California. We've come to see that you boys get back home safe and sound so that you can spend the rest of your lives in jail. What have we done? We are innocent. Killing an old man because you thought he had a little money isn't very innocent. Come along. Dios mío. All right, Alberto. We've got Alfredo's side of the story. Now start talking. What did he tell you? Never mind what he told us. It's your story we're interested in. What will they do with me if I tell you everything? There's no telling. They might hang you. No, they can't do that. It was Alfredo's fault. I didn't want to kill him. I... You what? Ah, I will not tell you. Better change your mind. You'll have to tell it in court anyway. Might as well help things out now by telling us about it. Oh, all right. I tell you. Get started. Well, Alfredo and I, we got Italian John's a shotgun. My father borrowed for him. I tell him I want to hunt rabbits. Alfredo said to me, I park my car in Dave Grove, west of town. You bring all my martini out the grove, and we take his money. Did you do it? I get shotgun shells, and then all my martini, he go to the grocery store to buy groceries. Then we drive out the place where we kill him. I tell him I want to see about a car. I want to buy it from a fellow. And when we get out there, he say, I no see any car. And I say, Pretty soon now you see planning. Then my uncle, Alfredo, he walk up and shoot the old man in the back of the head and he fall down. Was he dead? No. He crawled around on the ground. Then my uncle said to me, Alberto, you finished the job. So I hit him with a gun. That was when the stock that broke. That is all that happened. That's all, huh? Si, senor. How much money did you get? Four dollars and thirty five cents. Four dollars and thirty five cents? You killed a man for four dollars and thirty-five cents. He said, "You know, we bought beer with him, and now he decides to go away." He was very disappointed, Senor. Oh, you were disappointed, were you? Oh, si, Senor, is very disappointed. Too bad. Well, Alberto, you won't be disappointed this time. No, Senor. No. We'll see to it that you get everything you deserve. <laughs> Sheriff Lynch will conclude our story. Before presenting the closing facts, friends, I want to urge each of you who hasn't done so to put the new all-purpose Rio Grande crack to a personal test. I want you to find out to your own complete satisfaction the truth of what I've told you about this radically new and different gasoline, that the perfect blending of a double portion of ingredients does give you a motor fuel that for once in automotive history meets every purpose. 
It makes your car surpass any previous performance in every department of driving. This new cracked gasoline is liquid dynamite. Get it at any red and white Rio Grande station. And now, under Sheriff Steve Lynch. Alfredo and Alberta were not disappointed. They received life sentences in San Quentin, where they are living examples of the fact that crime cannot pay. Incidentally, Deputy Crevacore recovered from his spider bite and is still a member of Sheriff Rayburn's staff. Thank you, Wonder Sheriff Lynch. Riverside County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars to cancellation broadcast 287 regarding a murder. Suspects in this case are now in custody. That's all. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. Next week at this hour, Rio Grande will present The Plague of the Black Locust. This is the Columbia Broadcast.